I know that you know that there are unlimited amount of sewing supplies and fancy gadgets, fancy gadgets that uh, all help our home sewing. And I know you see new things all the time and you think, what do they do and are they worth it? Well, I have come across five new sewing tools and gadgets that I have never tried before. Coil the safety pins, a button cutter, some loop threaders for your overlocker, flat sewing pins for pinning patterns, and believe it or not, a rotary cutter I have never used before. So I'm going to try them for the very first time in this video and see if they're worth it. My sewing friends, what an exciting video we have. I'm excited because I've never tried these sewing tools before. Um, I know there are just like, you always probably see lots of different tools and gadgets and we've made so many videos on different sewing tools and gadgets because I know we all love them just as much as I do. And it's always nice to know some new ones because there might just be that one thing that's out there that you haven't heard of yet that is an absolute like, game changer in your sewing land and it can just really help you in like what you're doing and it's just one simple little random tool so I like to experiment and do all the experimenting for you and figure all these out so you don't have to. I have kept a little list of some things that I haven't um, tried before and always wanted to and uh, the idea of this came when I was browsing the Sewing Gem website because I was building my home sewing uh, kit for my home studio and there'll be a link to that video down below if you want to know what my personal sewing supplies are. But going through uh, the website there, I came across all these different tools that I thought, I've never even heard of that before. I like the uh, looper threaders. Sounds like it could be an absolute game changer. And so I decided that I think this would make a great video and here we are. So thank you to Sewing Gem who has supplied a few of these uh, products. If you like uh, shopping with local, with small businesses, I can absolutely recommend Gemma from Sewing Gem. I've worked with her in the past and uh, they're really great. They have an Australian website and a UK website. So if you like supporting small businesses, you can get many, many different sewing supplies. They have a lot uh, there. Otherwise, uh, and I'll put all of those links uh, to all this stuff down below. And yes, some of the links are affiliate links and I do earn a small commission on uh, when you use them. It doesn't cost you anything extra to use them, but it does help support me and this channel and me to continue making these free videos for you. So thank you for using them. Okay, let's get in. What do we even have here? We have coilless safety pins, we have a button cutter, we have loopers to actually, uh, threaders for the loopers of your overlocker threads, I know you're interested in that one, flat headed pins for actually pinning on your patterns and cutting out, and then, believe it or not, honestly, I've never actually used a rotary cutter before, thought it was high time that I actually give it a try and see what all the hype is about and if I want to use it, continue using it in my sewing routine, we'll leave that one for the end. Let's start up here with these coilless safety pins. So basically, well, Actually, I need to thank one of you here for introducing me to these because uh, it was in the comments section of one of my other videos that I even heard about such a thing. That I've never heard of a coilless safety pin. Let's open up my packet here. And so, yes, you guessed it already. They're just safety pins, but they don't have this coil down the bottom. Because we all know that's the part where all your fabric gets smushed up and munched up in and it gets stuck there and then it's the end, it pulls your fabric and it's ruined. And so this is why I thought, how have I never heard of a coilless safety pin before? I actually found them very difficult to find. Uh, so maybe it's easier for you where you're located. I could only get my hands on these really large ones. So I'll see what they're like and I have a feeling I might be hunting around for some smaller ones as well. So let's give it a try. Okay, so the whole idea is that, yeah, that feels nice. I don't feel any difference I and mean, this is a large one, but this spring here, like this doesn't feel any different. If I had my eyes closed, I wouldn't know any difference if there was a coil or not. So let me do this end. Generally, it always gets stuck in the end, right? So look at that. 
there is no coil to pinch this fabric and get stuck in. So I'm already impressed. Obviously with no coil, I kind of knew what to expect with that. Um, it's a very large safety pin, of course, but as opposed to something like this one, it's a bit finer, so I'll just put it through the one layer. But And these safety pins are terrible, of course, because they're just bending and are useless. So, And then it gets stuck in here and it leaves little marks and pulls the fabric. Awful. Yes, as expected. I really like this. <laughs> I am absolutely going to hunt for some smaller ones of these um, about this size here um, will be wonderful but there are all sorts of cases you can even fit with these so these big ones will be perfect for if you want to instead of the pins and when you're fitting and pulling things on and off and you know what kind of pain that comes in sometimes uh, you can put safety pins in the stead because they'll hold and they won't grab in the little coils. I know, so good. So that's what I'm gonna use these large ones for. I'm definitely hunting for some small ones. If you do find them, let me know because I'm on the hunt for some. Okay, the next product is this button hole cutter. So it is basically just a wedge that you can cut your button holes open with. This one is from Clover. I quite like their brand uh, and I got this from a sewing gem. Uh, it was one of those ones that I saw and I just thought, I've seen them but I've never tried them. Is it worth it? So we are about to find out. Look at this. So it's just like a little slicer. So ordinarily I use my little super sharp favorite embroidery scissors that have the little spike on the end. And so some buttonholes I prepared earlier usually um, come in and then, so what I'll do is I'll come in and I can cut to the very end and you slice inside um, your buttonhole. But if you don't have these amazing little super sharp pointy scissors, you know that other way that they show you on um, the, the patterns sometimes and they tell you to do this thing where you put a pin on the end and use your seam ripper to come through. Oh my gosh, that gives me nightmares thinking about it. Don't do that, don't do that. I always use scissors and you only cut to the end, but let's try out this button holder because this is like another one. You can't cut past it, the end. Like if you just put the little staple in here, you can't cut past. So, okay, it doesn't say what to put underneath it, but obviously I don't want to do this just straight on my table. So, um, I am going to use my sacrificial mat that I got for my rotary cutter because it is supposed to be a self-healing mat and you slice it with the rotary cutter. So I don't see how a button holder is different. I might not start it here. I might do it over here somewhere, but let's see. Um, it doesn't say if I hammer it or anything, so I'm just going to assume it's sharp enough and pop it in. So I'm just going to start with one end right at the point where I want it to go to. And, ooh, that is sharp. And then start on the other end right at the end here. Ooh. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Ooh. Let's test, gave that mat a little test already. I'll, I'll tell you my findings when we get to that one. Uh, that was really great. Um, this is so sharp, so if you get one, be careful. Um, I guess you're obviously limited uh, to the size, so a 12 mil buttonhole, that's, that's the small one exactly. So, you know, if it was smaller, you couldn't cut anything smaller with it, so I'd get the, the smallest one, but I don't really do buttonholes smaller than that. So let's do another one to see if it wasn't a fluke. Oh. Yeah, I'm just wiggling this either side. This is not hard at all. And this is way better than doing it with scissors. I haven't cut a single thread of that um, button hole, like not a single one. And trying to do it with my scissors even, absolutely. I accidentally cut little, little threads sometimes, here or there happens. This is... Really wonderful. This is now the only tool that I'll be using to open buttonholes with. So this one is an absolute winner. Yeah, I'm, I really like this one. Definitely worth it, definitely worth it. Uh, for record, this is the 12 mil buttonhole open cutter, buttonhole, uh, cut, buttonhole cutter from Clover. Okay, so I also saw this one browsing the Sewing Gem website and this one, this one got me to say, I have never heard of such a thing before. So these are some extra long threaders. They're needle threaders for the overlockers, like for looper threaders. I know, 
Have we been threading overlockers wrong all this time? So I definitely wanted to give this a try and let's see how it goes. Okay, so the uh, long one here is for regular sewing machines and so like your regular needle, so to say, whether it's an overlocker or your straight sewing machine. And this curved one is supposed to be for the loopers. And so they're just little little threads with just, this one has a hole in it and this one has a little hook. So I guess I'm going to have to unthread my entire overlocker and then rethread it. The things that I do for you. Don't do this at home. Don't do this at home. Gosh, I can't even remember the last time I had to thread from scratch because you know you just tie the ends off um, and run them through. It hurts to do this. Let's start with the lower looper. This is really hard doing this sideways. The one in question is this teeny little one in here and you always have to try and like poke it through and where are my tweezers? There is no overlocking threading happening without these, happening without them. Um, so rather than trying to endlessly poke this through, I guess the idea is that we would use this to probably come around the back. This is usually a lot easier when you're not doing it sideways with a camera in front of you, by the way. So you probably won't find it this hard. <laughs> And then there's just a little loop. So I just catch the thread in the loop and just pull it through. And that really made that so easy. Um, Cause I didn't even have to try and like pull it out the other end. You know, when you're always trying to grab it out. Yeah, that was really easy. All right, let's do the other looper. So rather than trying to poke this through this hole here and then trying to get it on the other end, again, use my tiny little looper lot. So this comes through here and now I've got the little hook around here. So grabbing my thread. I think that's impossible to do without actually uh, moving my hands in front of the camera. Very sorry. So it comes in here. You can see it hooks into the loop here and then you can pull this through and voila. That makes it much easier uh, than trying to like poke it through and pull it out. Now it is fairly fiddly. Um, I will try the uh, actual top needle out here. Maybe you don't need to see this one and I can work front on, it might be a lot easier. So this one is a little loop, so how would I do this? So you wanna do it opposite to how it goes in. So, so you push it through because then you can thread this through a really large hole. Still don't want a massive bend in your... And then you can just pull it through and yeah. So yeah, that's pretty nifty. Okay, the verdict on these. Well, I think they're really handy. Absolutely. I think like anything, little gadgets, once you get the knack of it, it'll become really easy. And if you're actually sitting front on, <laughs> uh, it would be much easier as well. I think these could be very useful, particularly if you do find threading and trying to grab the, the thread with the tweezers really hard and seeing the holes really hard. These will be very useful. They are still fiddly. If you find that threading and everything is not a problem, you know, if you don't have issues with it, complaints, these are probably not so much needed, but I think they're still pretty nifty and handy and I will like having these in my kit sometimes you know it just doesn't work and I think this will be really handy to have for all sorts of things so let's move on to the next two items and we'll use them in conjunction because one are these flat pins for pinning down patterns then the other is for cutting out so let's pin some patterns first so these are flat headed pins as opposed to yes I didn't definitely didn't trick you uh haven't used these yet <laughs> there we go so these uh, have a flat head pin, uh, pin head, as opposed to, you know, like a regular pin has a ball on the end. And so the idea for using these, you can use them anywhere, but the idea was to use them for, for pinning down pattern paper so that you don't get a bulge and everything will sit really nice and smooth and flat. I think I heard this in another comment here on YouTube. So thank you all so much because I do read all those comments and they are really, really useful for not just me, for all of us. So thank you for always leaving those. Okay, so let's test this out. Tiny little pattern piece here and I'm going to pin half with my regular pins and half with uh, flat pins. Okay, so pinning them down, 
absolutely these are really nice and flat and I can already see where these would probably be really useful uh, I do like the long length and I think for pinning most things this will be really great obviously I'm using a teeny tiny facing on purpose because they're generally more difficult these tiny pieces so this long length of pin you know it, it was quite difficult to fit in here because the pin length is the size of the facing so you know you might have to swap it in that instance but on a, like most other pieces I think these would be really great in this really long length too and well I'm going to use this one um, cutting uh, because I'll use the rotary cutter next by itself let's test this against um, regularly cutting out uh, pieces Okay, so on this plain uh, cotton, it is one of the easiest fabrics, of course, so everything's pretty easy. And, you know, cutting it out, didn't notice too much differences in like how it performed, but I could notice a difference in that it really is a lot flatter over these pins and particularly when you get really fine, delicate fabrics and like it will definitely make a difference, I think, in certain circumstances where you don't want that bulge coming up. Even the whole thing, this actually has to like come up and down so much more over everything, whereas this just sits flatter. So I think this will be more accurate, particularly when you go out to more difficult fabrics um, rather than the 101 type you know sewing quilting cotton uh that will make a difference and i think having to use fewer pins because of the length will be useful too do take a little bit getting used to it's because i'm so used to these little ball heads and like how i hold them this flat pin is a little bit awkward to begin with but uh yeah i think that these will be a great addition and i will definitely keep these and use these for pinning down flat um patterns like this because it really does just make it really flat and smooth and just having that longer length really does help too. So you just need fewer of them. So I quite like it. And I can definitely see myself using those. Okay, let's move on to the next one, the rotary cutter. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, how on earth could you have never used one before? I know. So I was very old school and I just cut with scissors and scissors, scissors. <laughs> scissors uh, my dressmaking shears and I've never had an issue with it I can cut out anything I need anytime any layers anything and I just like it so I will say my opinion is already biased and skewed because it's been so long since I've used one so I already think that this will be a great tool for certain things uh, I suspect that um, around tiny little pieces like this will be really hard, near impossible to, to cut out larger pieces, probably good. What I think that it'd be really useful for is bias strips. Yeah, I think this is more what it is really made for, is for quilting and all those straight lines and just running it across the ruler seems like a dream. Of course, I had to get one of the mats to go with it because you can't just roll this on your like board. So I got this like huge, big, I just got the biggest one I could get because I thought if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. It's one of the things that deterred me off um, originally. I'd see people, um, you know, cutting out patterns with them. And at the time, this was a long time ago, they weren't such a thing for home sewing. And so the boards that you got were like, you know, quite small. And I just always just thought how, like even this one here, how I'd have to keep moving it to do pattern pieces around like my whole layout. And I just thought, Mm, I don't think that's for me. Uh, so that's why I never sort of uh, delve into using the trendy uh, rotary cutter. So, but it is time. It is definitely time. So I got this one from Olfa. Um, it was a good looking brand. I liked the shape, the look of it. It looks like it's quite easy to use and will have a nice little touch. So let's give it a try. Okay, the instructions are pretty much use the blades and use a mat underneath. So. Okay, let's give this a try. I feel like I'm going to damage this mat. I mean, it's the whole point of it, but it feels wrong. <laughs> Although my, but my buttonhole cutter that I used before, that little spot, it did just self heal. It was like miracle. I should um, point out, what mat do I have here? Fisker's cutting mat, um, this one is. I'll leave a link down below as well. Let's cut something. I'm just going to cut something to begin with. So it looks like you have to hold it down to use it, but I kind of like that because then it's all like the blade is never exposed. You, you take your hand off and there's no blade. So I like that. Um, let's just cut. 
Ooh, geez, that is sharp. All right, I kind of see, it's like, it's kind of fun, yeah. Ooh, that's a tight little circle, all right. And the mat underneath. Oh, I've, I've heard it, It's I've cut it. Okay, now the facing piece laid down and let's see if I can actually cut out a teeny little pattern piece because obviously a large pattern piece, it's going to be no problem. Let's try something tricky like this small one. Okay, I missed a tiny bit and this sliver, okay, I think I got it. Oh, all right, it didn't cut this part. Okay, clearly I need some uh, practice at this because I'm using it. Well, let's just say I'm using it like it's my first time using it and not pressing hard enough and getting close enough. So, okay, okay, let's try some bias uh, strips because that's where I really think it's going to shine and then I will give my comments on it. Okay, so the idea here is that instead of drawing all of the bias strip lines, I can just cut it straight with this. So that's what I'm going to try. Okay, I'm going to cut some bias strips. I'm gonna make some bias binding. 18 mil, stop and need 36, and okay, I got a little bit excited and carried away. So um, that is a shame, all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm not used to having to hold the ruler and everything so much. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there and then cut a new line so I keep my bias strip intact. Okay, it's probably a little bit more tricky than I thought it was going to be, or it just takes practice. Probably a different ruler. This is really a grading ruler, not one of the ones like a, an actual quilting ruler. It's probably thicker so that the blade um, butts up against it and it's probably much easier to use than just my grading ruler here. So I would definitely uh, look at that um, if I'm going to keep doing this. Okay, that's actually a little bit stressful. Let's lock that off for safety. All right, the rotary cutter, well, um, it's, I'm surprised. It's different than I thought. Um, I think I definitely like the idea of the bias strips and the straight cuts. I think I would need a different ruler, something thicker that I can, um, more easily, um, laid across. It was probably a little bit trickier. It just kind of, maybe I'm uh, just not used to it. Obviously it's my very first time. So the, the more you, you use it, easier it'll be. You know, you just see people do this on, on the internet and it just works. Whereas it's, I found it just kind of wants to really roll off quite quickly. So you do actually need to focus a lot more than you think that you do um, with it. But I mean, it's got beautiful straight strips um, that, you know, with practice would get easier and easier to do. I think for garments, those small pieces, you kind of have to, when you cut it out, you have to actually cut further to be able to cut around. If you're trying to save fabric or have tight spaces together, that obviously won't work. Um, and the small ones, I think I'm still going to use my shears for say large garment pieces because of that reason. I can cut just to the end of the scissor and cut in really tight curves very easily. Um, and I won't have to keep moving a mat around to try and, you know, put it underneath the garment all the time. It'd be less movement for me, but for bias strips, I think it will be useful. So I will give this more uh, work. I know there's a lot of you that absolutely swear by your rotary cutters and love them. And absolutely, if you have trouble with your hands, like this would be way, way better tool than using scissors and shears. But fortunately I don't fall in that category, at least not yet in my life. So um, yeah, but this will be staying for mostly bias by strips, I think, and well, maybe some other pieces, anything that still fits on this single mat is what I would cut with it. So there you go. There's, uh, there are new tools and even some surprising than 
I thought. So I hope that my observations of maybe using them, keep in mind that obviously it's using it for the first time. The more you get used to anything it becomes easier. Like this I think will become much easier over time. The looper threads and not being on the side will become much easier to use those two. Uh, so things like that, it's all about what you get used to and like, but I've got a few new tools now, I think, and it was really fun to try them. Let me know how you liked this video. Which one do you love? Do you hate? Are you going to find as well? Or if there is something else that you think that I should try out, do let me know in the comments down below because it's really fun. I'll, I'll happily try them all out for you and give me, give you my opinion. Okay. Sewing friends, happy sewing until next time. Bye.